Now, uh, for today's agenda, um, uh, we'll have the opening remark to be given by our um, uh, Deputy uh, Council General, uh, Gen uh, Consulate General of Vietnam in Hong Kong, Mr. Uh, Lei Hai Chiu. And then we'll follow by some uh, uh, insight sharing about the investment and industrial park development in uh, Vietnam. After that, we'll have a short break. Uh, and then we have uh, four guests to uh, come here to discuss the cultural diversity and business opportunity in Vietnam. And then uh, after that, we have another short break and also uh, uh, we'll have the final session on the uh, panel discussion. Uh, before we start the uh, uh, workshop, I would like to have to thank our uh, funding support from the uh, Professional Service Advancement Support Scheme of the Hong Kong government, and we uh, uh, and the uh, sponsor from uh, Golden Resources uh, in, uh, Development International, and our six collaborating organizations such as CMA. Uh, Australia and uh, uh, and other, for example, the uh, Chamber General, uh, the Chinese uh, Chamber uh, of Commerce and the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, uh, Hong Kong Institute of uh, Certified Public Accountants, the Law Societies, and also the uh, Hong Kong Chinese uh, uh, Association of Audit Accountants and Auditors, with uh, our uh, supporting organization for the whole series uh, of the, for example, AWA, uh, uh, Women Accountant Association, et cetera. And specifically for this Vietnam workshop, uh, we are glad that we have uh, six new supporting organization, uh, including Hong Kong Business Association Vietnam, Hong Kong Vietnam Chamber of Commerce, the China Center for Special Economic Song Research, uh, Shenzhen University, the Bell and Road uh, Research Institute, Shenzhen for International Cooperation and Development, and uh, the Institute of World Economics and Politics, uh, Vietnam Academy of Social Science and uh, Polio MBA Alumni Association, and various uh, CTU supporting units. Thank you. Uh, before uh, we start, uh, I would like to um, invite Professor Linda Lee, uh, the director of CSHK and also a project coordinator of this past workshop uh, series to say a few words. May I invite Linda? Hello? Hi, Linda. hello. Can you hear me? Hi, hello. Yes, yes, I can. Yeah. Can you yeah. see me now? So, Yes. Um, well, thanks, Phyllis and everyone. Uh, I'm, I, I, first of all, I need to apologize that I cannot join you on the uh, CityU campus site today because uh, for prudence sake, I, I, I just contract a flu for a few days and I thought uh, it, I, I, I need to pay extra caution. And okay, so I, I better join you on, online as uh, uh, many of our participants, you know, do, and our many of our speakers, you know, they are overseas and Vietnam and 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 mainland China. Uh, so, um, without further ado, I would like to leave uh, all the time, okay, for our distinguished uh, speakers and our participants to comment and discuss on Vietnam, uh, which is a, such an exciting uh, place, um, uh, you know, uh, for investment and all kinds of. Uh, 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 sustainable, you know, uh, uh, progress uh, in sustainable development in, in the coming years. Um, so I, I like uh, to return the time to Phyllis, okay, and, and I uh, congratulate uh, all our supporting organizations in working with us that closely, and in particular, Shenzhen University, uh, Professor Tao Yutao, okay, who would be one of our speakers today. Thank you, Phyllis. Okay, uh, thank you, Linda. So without undue delay, may I invite uh, Mr. Lei Hai Chiu, uh, the um, Deputy Council General, uh, Council General of Vietnam in Hong Kong to give us uh, his opening remarks. Mr. Lei, please. Thank you, Dr. Mo. Uh, 
very good morning to everybody. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the Consulate General of Vietnam in Hong Kong, let me uh, expand my very warm welcome and uh, cordial greeting to all the participants participating both in person and online. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the tipping point of history caused by uh, COVID-19 pandemic. However, uh, history has proven that in all crises, mankind will eventually triumph. In fact, the rolling out of vaccination program of many government, coupled with the current economic uh, growth feature, I believe that we are on the right track and on our way to recovery. In such context, I would like to thank the City University Research Center for Sustainable Hong Kong for inviting me to be a part of this workshop. And this is an important time for us to meet and explore how we can continue to move forward and how we can prepare to rebound after the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, Vietnam welcome and highly appreciate the Bell on Road initiative. Vietnam leader attended all the Bell on Road summits. In uh, 2017, Vietnam and China signed a momentum of understanding on joint implementation of the Bell and Road initiative and Vietnam two corridor and one economic circle plan. On our part, uh, the consulate general is currently working with the Bell on Road office in Hong Kong. And our first project is to uh, organize uh, a uh, uh, conference, G G2G conference this year. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to inform you that uh, with the GDP growth of 2.9%, uh, uh, Vietnam is uh, among only one, 10 countries in the world with a positive growth in 2020. Uh, for this year, uh, international financial institutions, institutions like ADB, World Bank, IMF are all optimistic about Vietnam economic growth prospect uh, with forecast uh, of 6.3 to 6.8%. In general, Vietnam still maintains macroeconomic stability and is in recovery trend. Ladies and gentlemen, Vietnam is considered as a potential destination for investors for many reasons. I just point out some brief factors that why investors should start to continue to expand their business in Vietnam. First, Vietnam has deeply and broadly integrated into the world economy to continuously concluding trade agreement with major countries and region over the world. So far, Vietnam had concluded 15 free trade agreement and negotiating in additional two. The, the new generation FTA, including comprehensive and progressive agreement for China Pacific partnership, the EU Vietnam free trade agreement will help Vietnam further integrate into the regional and global supply chain extend its export markets and offer great potential for investors, creating opportunities for them to further expand their market reach. Second, Vietnam is a potential and large market for, with political stability and is one of the most successful country in the world at containing the pandemic. With a population of nearly 100 million people, Exploring the domestic market of Vietnam is also considered as potential business for investment strategy. Furthermore, Vietnam is one member of ASEAN economic powerhouse, home for more than 600 million people. Third, by variety of regulation, which benefit enterprises have been enacted in new enterprise law, new investment law, administrative 
procedure are simplified and investment conditions are also reduced. Fourth, the labor force of Vietnam is young, abandoned, and well qualified by the labor code is considered to be quite uh, competitive uh, in the region. Uh, I believe that uh, in their speech later on, uh, Mr. Lum from uh, the Golden Resource Development International, Mr. Fong uh, from uh, East BAV, Mr. Chan from Sanwa, and uh, uh, Mr. Chan from the China Construction Port Engineering Bureau, uh, who have actually been doing business in Vietnam for many years, been uh, give the objective view. Uh, on the investment environment uh, and business environment in Vietnam. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Vietnam and Hong Kong have enjoyed close relations in many areas, especially in economic and trade. Despite the pandemic, uh, trade turnover of two side rig, uh, 11.5 billion US dollars last year, increased 36.4 uh, percent compared to the year 2019. Hong Kong is also the number three largest investor in Vietnam with uh, about 2,000 projects and total registered investment capital of 27 billion US dollars. In 2020 alone, uh, more than 200 projects of Hong Kong uh, were newly granted in Vietnam uh, with a capital of 1.3 billion. Uh, the above figures are uh, vivid demonstration of increasing investment of Hong Kong in Vietnam. In addition to the favorable factor which I have mentioned above, the cultural similarity, similarity in business mentality can be viewed as additional advantage for Hong Kong business operating in Vietnam. The fourth, uh, we view that the workshop uh, team today, cultural diversity and risk management, is a great discussion topic. And I hope that the outcome of today's discussion will further contribute to understanding the success of Hong Kong business in Vietnam market. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the consulate general, is not represent the government of Vietnam in Hong Kong, but also represent the Hong Kong business community. We view that your success at our own and stand ready to assist your business in Vietnam. Lastly, I wish the workshop great success and uh, our guest and participants in very good time. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Late, for giving us such encouraging message about the development <coughs> of Vietnam and also the close uh, relation between Vietnam and Hong Kong, especially in trade and economics. Um, now we come to our first session on insight uh, sharing about the investment and uh, uh, industrial park uh, in Vietnam. Now for this session, originally we have invited uh, the director general, uh, the general director of uh, Longjiang Industrial uh, Park to talk about the uh, development there. However, due to the COVID-19, they are now in the lockdown situation and therefore cannot join us today. Therefore, for this session, we only have three uh, speakers uh, to share with us about the um, investment uh, development here. So, um, however, we in our training pack, I think every participant have received the uh, training pack. Okay, in our training pack, we have a session on Longjian uh, Industrial Park, and which provides some uh, uh, background information and investment details. So, for uh, you may refer to our uh, training pack for more information. Okay, so now uh, I would like to invite Mr. Van Du Food. Acting Head of Investment Promotion Division of the uh, Investment Promotion Center, um, foreign, uh, uh, foreign Investment Agency under the Ministry of Planning and Investment of Vietnam to share with us the latest development of the uh, foreign direct investment and also in particular related to Hong Kong investment in Vietnam and also the uh, 
to talk about the government support to uh, foreign investors. So uh, may I pass to Mr. Wen? Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, lady and gentlemen. Uh, today I'm very, um, my, may I introduce myself? I'm a, for, I'm a, the acting head of the investment promotion division of uh, under the foreign investment agency, uh, Ministry of Planning and Investment. So first of all, I would like to thank you for the organizers to invite me to present uh, at the workshop today. Uh, so um, uh, let me introduce a very short uh, overview of the type of content. Uh, I have four sessions to present today. The first is overview of FDI uh, plant in Vietnam. The second uh, is the Hong Kong investment in Vietnam. The third is the Vietnam industrial park development. And the fourth, Vietnam government support. Uh, <clears throat> As you can see for, at the opening remark by the Mr. Le Ha Chiu, the uh, Deputy uh, General Consulate of the Vietnam in Hong Kong, has said about the overview of FBI and investment in Vietnam. A little detail in the investment, the overview investment in Vietnam, and some point about the industrial parks in Vietnam. So uh, first slide, I would like to introduce you about the uh, annual GDP travel rate about the potent state uh, of the, the first quarter, quarter year 2021 uh, with 8%. So it, is, it uh, still keeps positive. Yeah, it's not a negative as someone thought. And we are also very happy that we also keep the uh, positive the development of the trade uh, FTI. And you know, uh, the trade turnover uh, is um, 155, 52.65 billion US dollars and increased 24.1 comparing to the same period of last year, 2020. Uh, I think that's a very um, uh, good point for us to uh, continue developing. And, you know, for the first, uh, first five months of 2021 uh, so far, the disbursement, we uh, have a 7.15 million US dollars, it increased 6.7%. So this uh, reflects that uh, the FDI sector to cover and a strong after the pandemic. And we hope that when the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is over soon, and I, I, I think the April we increase more and more. So as you know, the, uh, the total uh, needs the capital, uh, adjusted capital and equity capital and share project. We have a million, uh, 14 million US dollar and it is a rise of 0.8% on year. Uh, and this, uh, we have a two positive highlights to mention you here today. The first is newly and originally is the foreign investment um, capital sorry, in Mr. the five, Mr. Wen, the sorry. first five months as an increase. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Mr. Wen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, you haven't shown the PowerPoint. Can you, uh, or the, the PowerPoint are not moving. Can you move the PowerPoint? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 uh, FDI first. Um, the slide. Can you hear? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> now the PowerPoint yeah. only show the table of content. Uh, the table of content here? Yeah. Do you yeah. Have, uh, can you show the other PowerPoint? Move the PowerPoint. Yeah, okay. Now I, I will move to a next slide. Um, the slide did not move. Can you go to the next slide? No. No? No. 
pessoal. Hum. Uh, can I move? Yeah. Can you? Uh, still showing the table of content. Yeah, can you see? Yeah. So please go out, we move to next slide. No, no. I, I cannot move in the in my computer here. Oh, okay. Then then maybe uh, uh just leave yeah. it and then uh oh, oh yes now now yes yes. Okay okay yeah. Okay yes now. okay yeah yeah okay thank you. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about Vietnam. Yeah, as you can see in the sprint, the GDP in the first one nineteen ninety two twenty twenty one increased of four point forty eight. And the trade turnover is a 152.65 billion US dollars, increase 22.1. So this still keep, uh, still keeps positive. And we we'll go to the uh, now for the first five months, for the first five months so far, we uh, have this development of uh, 7.15 billion US dollars. And the total newly registered capital, uh, adopted capital, equity capital, and the share purchase, uh, we have 14 billion US dollars of May 20. And we, we have a two positive highlight here, the newly and additionally registered foreign direct investment capital in the first five months has increased by the 7%, 7%. And the most outstanding project is uh, the uh, a of the Polytech Far Eastern Vietnam, co-limited from the Taiwanese investor, uh, raised capital by 610 million US dollars after receiving the investment certificate. Uh, it's, uh, it's very big project. And uh, next slide. Uh, mm, yeah. But I, I'd like to talk about the Hong Kong investment in Vietnam till May the 20. Uh, 2021. The accumulated project to my 20 year. Uh, so Hong Kong is uh, ranked in the number five in uh, 140 country and territories investing in Vietnam. And Geo have a total register capital over 20, uh, 6,738 million US dollars. So with 1,977 project. And for the first five months, uh, Hong Kong has a 40 newly issued project with registered capital of $798.48 million. Dollars. And the uh, total registered capital is $917.51 million. Dollars. I just uh, a short overview of the Hong Kong investment. So I, um, I uh, yeah. Uh, now in Vietnam, we have uh, some potential investor investment sector. Uh, I want to mention here the uh, here's, uh, uh, ten uh, sector here: processing, supporting industry, biotechnology, uh, renewable energy, real estate, banking and insurance, agriculture and food processing. Uh, so about the agriculture in the in the southern. Uh, region of the, um, in Vietnam for the long uh, for the Anzang or Kanto, um, Shokchang, uh, the agriculture is a develop, uh, developing very much. And now uh, we, the government of Vietnam, are calling investment to this uh, province in the south of Vietnam. There's a healthcare, pharmacy, ICT software, infrastructure, and PPP and m and startup. This, uh, in addition, we also have uh, other sectors that we, uh, we attract uh, investment promotion. Let me uh, talk about the uh, industrial park development in Vietnam so far. 
up to 2020, since Australian, uh, we have 81.900 hectare in Australian, and so up to uh, accounting for 73.1%. Uh, yes, uh, of which we have a 20, uh, 286 which are uh, being planted, 106 IP under basic construction, and 18 economic zones are being established, and one economic zones are being planted. So the, uh, the industrial land is very, very huge. So that, we, that help us to uh, all the way to uh, foreign investment, uh, investor to be not to do business. We go with more uh, little bit to in 2021 here. Uh, until May of 2021, Vietnam has a 394 industrial zones established with a total national land of the 121.9 thousand hectares, uh, in which the industrial area reached to the 9,000 hectares, accounting for the 66.4 percent of the national land area. So it's a very, uh, uh, very big uh, land. Uh, as you know, in other provinces in Vietnam, uh, they are um, all, the, uh, all the provinces have as a master plan, master plan to expand and establish more industrial parks in the future, especially after the COVID-19 in Vietnam, some uh, local province, we developed and expand some land and industrial park and uh, industrial cluster also. Uh, that's some of the details about the industrial land. So for the, for the Long Zan industrial park, as uh, the uh, speaker has said, uh, because they are, um, because of COVID-19 and the general and the chairman are the, in the quarantine, quarantine, so they cannot deliver a speech today. So they told me that um, uh, next time when the COVID is over, they will um, give out a uh, um, presentation about the, the experience to, to do, uh, to develop the uh, industrial land in the Longzang Industrial Park in Anzang province. So I hope uh, I will get uh, the presentation and send to you later. later. Um, so how? We, how we do and what we do to support uh, foreign investor in Vietnam. Uh, you know, from the last year and now, uh, Vietnam uh, set up uh, the task force, a task force on the investment, uh, foreign investment promotion. So the, um, the head of the task force is uh, the deputy, uh, the prime minister is Pham Bing Bing. And then we have the minister of Planning and investment, who are the permanent deputy head as the investment, uh, the head and the deputy head. We also have um, uh, many relevant uh, ministers who are in charge of the current investment uh, promotions. And we are doing very well in Vietnam. All the agency, all the bodies in Vietnam combine together and we do our job. We do our task for to, to, to help the business, to help the expert from foreign country to, uh, to go to do the work. Uh, as you know, last year, we have a more than 20,000 um, experts from the other country uh, uh, come, come into Vietnam to, to do business. Uh, and I hope this year also. So here, the government support for the business during the pandemic for the electricity, uh, the electricity uh, rip type fly will be the discount by 10% during the peak or normal and or peak hours. And for financial support, yeah. We shorten the processing time for the uh, application trade or many. To go into detail, we will read about circle number three, 2021. 
uh, by the Vietnam uh, Bank. And the third is a tax and rent support. Uh, we also support uh, extend the time for paying tax and the land rent. And the fourth is a suspension of the social insurance payments. Yeah, the business affected by the United pandemic at the time of paying union by uh, yeah, this about 20, uh, 31st, 2020, and uh, 20, uh, so we, we are from the investment uh, promotion uh, and uh, under the Ministry of Planning and Investment. So we support uh, to provide uh, information on laws and policies. Um, we connect state agency at the deep to support the business. And also, the workshop, the conference, and because of uh, COVID-19, so we replayed by the, organizing some uh, virtual or webinar or online meeting or B2B. So at our ministry, we, we hold the meeting very regularly and uh, in that, uh, uh, highly appreciate that. Uh, in addition, we also support to solve the difficulty and the entanglement uh, sometimes or uh, very often so investor uh, ask us for the help them to solve some problem at uh, as Chopa, as they, they have some difficulty and then we are very quick to to help and to support them and they are very happy after the uh, being helped uh, <clears throat> Vietnam's always um, welcome all the investors, uh, especially uh, from the uh, Hong Kong, because you are um, uh, you always keep in the number four or number five or number, two, uh, number three in Vietnam. In the future, and especially after the pandemic, as Hong Kong investors, we come to Vietnam and to do business, and we are here ready to support you to do the business. Yeah. Uh, that's my presentation. Thank you very much for the attendance. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Wan. Uh, now, uh, I would like to invite Professor Tao Yi Tao uh, from Shenzhen University to discuss about the economic reforms in China and Vietnam. Uh, professor Tao is a professor at Shenzhen University and also the former vice chairman of the University Council and currently uh, she is the director of the uh, China Center for Special Economic Zone Research of Shenzhen University, uh, Dean of the Belt and Road Research Institute for International Cooperation and uh, Development. Uh, Professor Tao has dedicated to research on China's economic uh, reform and comparative study of Chinese and uh, foreign special economic zones, free trade zone, as well as the Greater Bay Area. Um, uh, Professor uh, Tao will deliver her uh, in Putonghua, but the PowerPoints are in English. I'm sorry that we do not have a uh, simultaneous interpretation. Um, so uh, may I invite Professor Tao? Hello. Hello. Uh, Tao Jiao Shou, now I'm going to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, 能够协助香港城市大学举办本次工作坊曾在越南社科院发表过演讲希望今天的工作坊能给我们彼此带来收获。我今天演讲的题目呢，是中国特色渐进式改革。
与中越改革互鉴。我讲两个问题，第一个问题呢，就是中国特色鉴定式改革的特点；第二个问题呢，是中越鉴定式改革比较与互鉴。那么，什么是中国特色鉴定式改革呢？我认为，中国特色鉴定式改革是在以建立经济特区为重要。实践载体，以先行先试为主要的实践逻辑与步骤的前提下，社会制度变迁的路径。具体的讲呢，就是以强制性制度变迁为主导，以幼稚性制度变迁为潜能，以自上而下顶层设计为核心，以自上而下的授权为路径，以经济改革为切入口，以全方位改革为方向。以发展经济为着眼点，以全面发展为目标，以非经济发展为路径，以协调和共享发展为宗旨。中国特色鉴定式改革的基本路径，反映了中国道路前行的内在的逻辑。那么，中国特色鉴定式改革它具有哪些特点呢？我认为它有三个特点。第一，从改革的实践路径来讲，尽管中国社会的制度变迁。还是以典型的渐进式改革为基本路径，其改革逻辑呢也符合幼稚性制度变迁的许多特质，但从根本上来讲，还是自上而下部署推动的强制性制度变迁。幼稚性制度变迁，或者作为强制性制度变迁的结果，或者作为推动强制性制度变迁的力量，并由中央政府批准之后。以正式制度变迁的方式来实施，并且展开的。它的第二个特点呢，就是从制度变迁的演进方式来讲，尽管中国特色渐进式改革沿着典型的渐进式的从局部到全局的实施步骤与路径进行的，但是在改革的进程中显现出独特的，并伴随改革的深化不断彰显出来的。制度供给与制度需求的这种相互依存关系，相互促进和这种相互依存、相互促进的由改革道路选择所决定的一种内在的逻辑关系。那么，它表现为一方面，在宏观层面上呈现出供给导向为主、需求导向为辅的总趋势，也就是中央政府顶层设计的。强制性制度变迁，以制度供给的方式部署推动改革的整体进程，而经济特区在特殊政策创造的这种制度空间内，实践着中央改革的意图的同时，又为幼稚性制度变迁，又以幼稚性制度变迁的方式，不断产生出新的制度需求。那么另一方面呢，从实践层面上，则呈现出需求导向为主。供给导向为辅的趋势，也就是由特殊政策派生出来的幼稚性制度变迁，以先行先试的成功经验，不断创造出新的制度需求，呃，从而呢推动以中央顶层设计为引导的强制性制度变迁，在深化改革的实践中，又不断创造出新的制度供给。那么中央顶层设计的。强制性制度变迁与特殊政策诱发的幼稚性制度变迁，作为改革过程中制度供给与需求的两个方面，呃，形成了中国特色渐进式改革的相辅相成，并富有制度绩效的一个有机进程。那么，从第三重主体来讲，在中国制度变迁进程当中呢，中央政府是一个主体，但是。在渐进式改革的框架中，还有一个不可忽视的主体，这个主体可以叫它，可以叫它为刺激行动集团，那么就是经济特区及其地方政府这样的一个主体。那么，经济特区作为中国渐进式改革的实践模式与路径，它有哪些功能呢？它有两方面的功能，第一。他在中央特殊政策所创造的先行改革的制度空间内，实践着国家整体改革的意图
。另一方面，他以不断先行先试的成功经验，创造出新的制度需求，从而推动中央顶层设计的强制性制度变迁政策的出台，促进促进或者推动中国改革开放不断向纵深迈进。那么，中越改革的这种比较和互鉴呢？我们知道，中国与越南是前社会主义国家唯一没有采取华盛顿共识，而是根据本国的具体情况采取渐进式改革的国家。匈牙利经济学家科奈在评价华盛顿共识时，曾说过这样的一段话：他说，华盛顿共识。并没有给他的信仰者们带来所期待的自由。被西方社会认为缺乏民主的一些亚洲国家，比如中国和越南，在逐渐完成社会转型的同时，经济持续增长，社会高度稳定。从中越改革的比较来看呢，从时间上来看，中国的改革开放始于1978年，其标志性。就是十一届三中全会，越南的改革呢，始于一九八六年，其标志是越南共产党的第六次代表大会。中国比越南改革早了八年。那么从改革的切入点来看，中国改革开放呢，是以经济体制改革为改革的入手的，呃，其标志呢，就是邓小平同志的一个伟大判断。计划经济不等于社会主义，资本主义也有计划；市场经济不等于资本主义，社会主义也有计划。计划与市场都是经济手段。越南改革开放表现为政治体制先行。1 9 8 6年，越共那个越共六大呢，结束了领导人的终身制，开始了按揭轮换。二零零一年，越共九大章程明确规定，总书记任期不得超过两届。二零零六年，越共十大引入了越南的最高领导人，就是中共中央书记的人选呢，差额选举选举制度。呃，从经济体制改革方面呢，中国的改革呢是发起于农村，也就是大家都知道的。凤阳、安徽凤阳小小港区的分田到户，但真正的改革呢，在城市，着眼力于或者着力于城市的市场经济发展，鼓励民营经济。越南改革呢，一九九七年改革开始，改革开始，呃，那么中越改革呢，实施的这个从切入点来讲不同，相对而言呢，中国。中央政府更具有统筹全国资源、集中于目标建设的一种绝对的权利。举国体制呢，优势既无处不在，又可以在短期内提高改革的效率，从而带来四十余年的高速增长。那么，相比较而言，越南的政治体制改革呢，是一个重要的组成部分。土地改革呢，调动了农民的积极性，使越南的粮食到在一九九九年就开始。可以出口，并且成为世界第二大大米的出口国，并且延续今呃至今。越南改革呢，相对来讲经济起步比较晚，尤其在经济建设之初呢，中央政府及地方政府财政还不是很充足，土地事事实上的私有化增加了基础建设的交易成本。但是上述改革使越南革新开放，具有内在的后发优势。所以呢，我们看到1998年到2008年，越南经济增长仅次于中国，在全全球排名第二。那么，我认为越南缺少一个既能有效的率领、率先实现中央改革意图，又能发挥对优质生产要素产生极具效应、对呃对带动社会经济发展发挥扩散效应的。一个区域性增长级，这个区域性增长级就是像如中国这样的深圳。尽管国与国之间会存在着很多差异，但我认为，通往富裕、繁繁荣、富裕的道路是可以借鉴的。我就说到这些，谢谢各位，热特干们。
This is Tao Jiu Thank you, uh, Professor Tao, for sh uh, sharing the uh, insightful comparison between uh, China and uh, Vietnam's economic reform. Now, uh, I would like to um, invite uh, Mr. Darling Chen, uh, Deputy General Manager of China Construction for uh, Engineering uh, Bureau Company Limited, to share his experience and challenges in uh, Vietnam. Uh, Mr. Chen has over 20 years overseas work experience in the construction um, uh, engineering market. He has witnessed the company's going abroad history and has um, hands-on experience in putting forward measures uh, to manage awareness uh, risks. Okay, so without undue delay, uh, may I invite Mr. Chen, please? Thank you. Thank you, Hoster. Thank you, Ms. Tao and the dear participants outside and online. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my order to in, invite to participate in this work, workshop and speak on behalf of China Construction Force Engineer Division. First of all, I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude of all the guests and the friends who care about the support of our company's development. Thank you very much. As a cooperate responsibility, I'm going to brief, brief, briefly introduce, introduce the business of our company. The part of the first, briefly introducing of CCFED. Found, our company founded in 1962, China Construction Force Engineering Division is one of the affiliates of China's State Construction Engineer Co Cooperation, which reaches the 80th of Fortune 500 companies. At the present, we have 19 sub subsidiaries with more than 28,000 employers. Our business scopes cover the whole in industry chain, which comprises civil engineering, infrastructure, con construction, real estate development, investment, survey and design, operation and management. Today, we have a presence in more than 20 provinces and here cities. In the greater Bay Area alone, we have built a series of landmark project, such as the 580 meter Guangzhou East Tower, 40, uh, 441, Meter Shenzhen King K, one one hundred building. DJ Global Head Office and the tallest prefabricated per, per, steel structure in Asia, Hanking Center. Since the building of the new century, we actively responded to call the go, going overseas by exploring markets in Indonesia, Cambodia, Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines, Laos. The second part, cooperation prospect, uh, pro, prospect between China and Vietnam in construction industry. Both China, both China and Vietnam are important manufacturing bases for the world. And the, the two, two countries are remarkable, remarkably complementary in many industries. Today, I would like to tell three possible deep cooperation directions between China and Vietnam in the field of construction. Port one, 
jointly building high-end industry parks for building materials. In recent years, wind and the construction industry have men mentioned, mentioned uh, tremendous momentum growing from about uh, 5 billion US dollar in 27 to about uh, five, uh, 50, 57 billion US dollar in 2020. And an average growth growth rate about seven percent is a predict predict over the next the next five years. With the rapid We learned the high-end building materials in Vienna are in short supply. As the world's largest producer and consumer of construction materials, China makes the most consumable building materials, including cement, floor glass, cer ceramic, stone, and wall materials. In 2020, production of major building materials sustained uh, sustained growth with the total of output of semen at 2.38 billion ton, up 1.6 person percent year uh, year on year. The flood glass at 900. 15 million with, with both, up 1.3%. However, at the same time, China's building materials industry is faced with a severe situation of overcapacity and increasing downward process. A large number of building materials makers have to transform and transform and utilize the exercise ex capacity by import, importing equipment, personal and technology capabilities, capabilities abroad. abroad. That, that for taking part in high-end building materials industry in Vienna, alongside the going out construction companies and uh, those driving the whole in structure, in, uh, in industry chain to strive overseas. It's a good chance for building materials maker from South China, uh, such like uh, Guangdong and uh, Guangxi. Instead of, sing, of simple export, exporting building materials to Vietnam, Chinese building materials maker may consider jointly mining raw building materials with Venus local man local manners through cooperation equip participants environment holding to grant to grant run materials source and uh, severe, and the severe prices by way of strength, strength is alone, building materials maker from both both country can build high-end building materials industry parks with the combined advantage in bringing up quality during down costs and uh, expanding market uh, markets. I will I will fortunately the self. The self-sufficiency of building materials will be achieved in Vienna. Point two, Tra transplant the modular construction industry chain to Vienna. Compare, compared with the traditional building technology, technique, 
Motor, motor, motor construction excel in building speed, labor cost saving, overall quality and flexibility, and hold the advantage in the integration of design and construction. Synchronization of building and uh, decoration and the informatization of many of management process. In the new era of green construction, high efficiency and high quality, it is, it is becoming more and more popular with the market. Especially during the COVID-19 epidemic, epidemic, crowd construction side and easily become a hot bit of virus transmission. From this point of view, modular construction not only responses the future and the construction industry but also one of the means of the prevent and the fight the epidemic. Currently, our company has a, has a pre-fabricated building materials plan in Guangdong. Its, it's a business covers the whole industry chain of design and development, production and procurement, logistics and distribu distribution, install, installation and construction. The annual auto about zero companies reach, reached $80,000. Which has for a year been for a year been vigorously su su supporting the needs of construction of operated by air. We also plan to build two more green construction industry parks and uh, major construction base of the high student, high standard in Guangzhou. We also seriously hope. If the if the securement permit, uh, permit, the one the advantage industry chain can be transplanted to Vietnam to help achieve help achieve the transport transformation and uh, upgrading of the Vietnam construction industry. Point three. Connectivity of uh, outside construction companies and uh, challenges. After years of development, Chinese construction company re responsibilized by Chinese construction have uh, accumulated uh, reach in, in express in uh, Australian design, European, European plan, engineering survey. Materials in public uh, enjoy, uh, energy energy design, among many other fields, and uh, train a lot a large number of ex expansion uh, be backbone talents. If a builder a builder from the two country can join to undertake some projects of in, in importance in importance. In the process of project implementation, project management uh, management ability, techni technical uh, technical innovation ability, risk control ability, comprehensive or contractability of the mainland personnel will be effectively improved. I think this will be a way to train to train Venus construction talents and a good opportunity, opportunity to strengthen uh, communication between the two countries. Above is my speech today. Shall, uh, shall there be a, a thought there, there are in, in military? 
Thank you of all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chen, for sharing. So <clears throat> this come to the end of this session, and we will have a short break of about 10 minutes. And we'll be back at, uh, now at 10 minutes, OK? Uh, 10 past 11, OK? Uh, for, uh, for uh, if you have any question would like to ask or discuss during our panel session in our last, last session, then uh, you may uh, send in your question via the chat function to us so that we can uh, raise, uh, uh, <clears throat> raise the question uh, to be discussed in the final session. Okay, Phyllis, thank you. Can, can I make a later? quick comment? Phyllis, uh, Phyllis, yes. can I make a quick comment before we go? Uh, because uh, as I heard uh, Mr. Wen uh, talking about, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the services are provided by his office, that includes, um, you know, uh, obviously advising uh, uh, prospective investors into wet name and uh, matching business. I think those uh, services are very helpful and very useful for uh, business and professionals from Hong Kong uh, who would be interested, uh, who might be interested in, in, in investing in, in, in Vietnam. And so I would like to take this opportunity uh, uh, to talk, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to mention that uh, uh, as part of this workshop, of this, uh, of this workshop, we encourage, you know, more interaction, post-workshop interaction between our uh, distinguished speakers and on also our participants, and we all uh, actually invite everybody to um, to join our contact sharing platform uh, by sharing their contact information, and then we will email everybody their their, their contact information. So I uh, do hope uh, Mr. Wen's uh, office can join this uh, contact sharing platform so that uh, after the workshop. Our participants, you know, they might come up with all kinds of questions. Okay, uh, not they, they they might ask some of them in the workshop, but they might come up with questions that uh, uh, Mr. Wen's office would be in a very good position to help them. So uh, I just want to say uh, say about this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll have a break. Okay, see you later. Uh, our first speaker is Mr. Anthony Lam. Uh, Mr. Lam is the CEO of Golden Resources Development International, a listed company in Hong Kong. Um, Mr. Lam is an expert in business investment in uh, ASEAN countries, including um, convenience stores in uh, Vietnam, uh, procurement network in uh, Thailand, and property development in Malaysia. Okay. In addition to his business, uh, Mr. Lam also served on Wernus Advisory Committee of uh, Public and Government Organization in Hong Kong, including uh, serving as the uh, Deputy Chairman of the Federation of Hong Kong Industries. Mr. Lam had also been awarded the APEC Medal from the uh, Vietnam government in recognition of his contribution to the Vietnamese rice industry. Now I pass the time to Mr. Lam. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. I'll just maybe probably it's better sit down. Yep. Hello, everybody. And uh, uh, professors, uh, Mr. Ju, uh, Mr. Gung, and then uh, Mr. Fu. So I'm honored to be here to uh, speak on behalf of uh, actually participants and investors into Vietnam. Uh, just sharing our experience and let, uh, I want to like spread the word uh, how actually we work and how we do business in, in Vietnam. Uh, I've been in Vietnam for more than 28 years, uh, my first uh, step into the, the beautiful country. So what I'll do, I'll do the introduction of the group. Uh, I will put some opportunities for Hong Kong professionals uh, about Vietnam and then doing business in Vietnam and uh, also the opportunities and risk. So the Golden Resources Group. So we established 75 years ago and we started as a rice trader. And then that's why we've got a very deep ASEAN connections with Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, even Malaysia. So we've got a few business units. We've got, of course, the rice business units. Uh, we've got the convenience retail unit. 
We've got property development, uh, environmental plastic business. Uh, we do PPP projects as well, and also ports and uh, shipping projects. So uh, with my experience, I'm now, of course, uh, uh, um, our company is listed as uh, Professor said, my company is listed uh, in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And previously, I have also sit in different boards and chairmanship of different listed companies. And also, I'm uh, um, sitting in the different boards in the uh, Agriculture and Fisheries and uh, Conservation Department in Hong Kong, uh, the Trade Department in Hong Kong, uh, uh, VTC in Hong Kong, and also uh, the ITC, the Innovation and Technology Commission in Hong Kong. So our experience in Vietnam is including uh, actually uh, in a, a lot of different areas. We've got retail with Circle K, we have, we have an SPV investment there. Uh, we have a joint venture with SF uh, uh, of China. It's a Hong Kong China joint venture. Uh, we've also uh, uh, have a joint venture with Japanese company. This is the largest rice machine producer in the world, uh, Sataki company. Uh, we invested into the Hong Kong, um, Vietnam, uh, it's an SOEJV in the Saigon ports. And also a Hong Kong, Vietnam joint venture, also an SOE with a shipping company. And then we have, of course, a rice milling uh, facility in Vietnam. It's a Hong Kong, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam joint venture. And also a PPP project with a Hong Kong, Malaysia SPV. So our experience in investing in Vietnam is, uh, quite uh, large the exposure. So let's say with the opportunities of the Hong Kong professionals. So as you can see, Hong Kong has got a lot of, of, of very high skilled and licensed professionals. We've got a lot of chartered accountants, registered professionals in banking, insurance, and the legal sectors. And this creates a lot of opportunities uh, between Hong Kong and Vietnam. So what are our strengths? I mean, the strength of Hong Kong is the ancient financial center. It's where the people can actually come to Hong Kong and get capital. So capital is very important for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the country to grow. And Hong Kong can act as a, a medium or a, a place for the ASEAN countries uh, to get the capital. So we can radiate as Hong Kong professionals, we radiate our Hong Kong practices to other parts of Asia uh, through uh, the Belt and Road, ASEAN, the GBA, uh, and the Greater China area. So it all it, it will in, uh, include in investments, legal, arbitration, and accounting practices. So when we invest in ASEAN countries, they will all, always ask the arbitration center, will, will it be Singapore or will it be Hong Kong? But if more and more Hong Kong professionals extend ourselves into, into the ASEAN countries, Hong Kong can be more and more important into, into this arbitration area and the legal area. So what we get, we can get, get used to and actually affect uh, or, uh, the, the, the system uh, of where the Hong Kong people or the international people invest in. Uh, we also, of course, uh, our banking, banking sector, finance center and FinTech is pretty strong in Hong Kong. Uh, for example, one of the key um, mobile payment system in, in, in Vietnam, the Momo, is actually invested in Hong Kong. The CEO is actually in Hong Kong. And also the telephone company, of course, Hutchison. Implementation of international accounting standard. So uh, in Vietnam, of course, they have the VAS, the Vietnam accounting standard. But since in Hong Kong, uh, a lot of international, uh, Hong Kong accounting standard is moving closer and closer to the IAS. So Hong Kong professionals are very familiar with IAS. So uh, that can also uh, uh, lead uh, the, the Vietnam side to a more international accounting standard thing. So for us, it's, uh, 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 we have to, 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 to work together to how to move the VAS into IAS so that the listed companies in Hong Kong or even internationally can, can uh, uh, easily adopt. So of course, also the listing rules in Hong Kong, the compliances, and, uh, and also because of the, of the strong financial background in Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong can also act as a PPP financial hub uh, for legal, fund, like traffic accountants, engineering. So these are the things that Hong Kong will be strong in. And of course, also insurance facilitating center, our corporate uh, headquarter for investing into HQ. I know the Hong Kong, uh, uh, um, uh, Chris Ho, the Hong Kong monetary uh, uh, department, was it? 
Okay, they are, uh, they are actually working very hard to, uh, to grow Hong Kong as a hub into investing into ASEAN countries. So about Vietnam. So why, are, why people always say Vietnam is so good? I mean, if you, if you sit in Hong Kong and they say, oh, when you talk about Hong Kong, they're, they're very positive about the growth of Vietnam. So we have one, four, uh, uh, according to AZ Nielsen, we have four very uh, good factors about Vietnam. Okay, the, the drivers of the growth in Vietnam. Low urbanization, as you can see, we call from the experience in China, the urbanization actually bring in a lot of economic growth. So in Vietnam, the urbanization is still uh, relatively low. The working hours is long, people work very hard. High women in the workforce, as Mr. Ju just said, uh, uh, Vietnam has almost 100 million people. Okay, not a lot if you compare to China. So that means, but a lot of the industries actually are now moving into, into Vietnam. That means a lot of opportunities for the robotic AI uh, automation industry, as well as the traditional uh, labor intensive uh, industry. But 100 million people is actually not that much uh, if you want to go uh, uh, Vietnam into a major production hub or manufacturing hub. And also because of the increase in wealth, uh, if I talk to, talk to any, any Vietnamese uh, people in Vietnam, they are very positive about the future of Vietnam. And this positive uh, feeling will actually help the, the, company, uh, the country to progress forward. Of course, in, in Vietnam, they're involved with a lot of the bilateral trade, also uh, mentioned by uh, Mr. Mr. Ju. So of course they're they're in the ASEAN, and and then you talk about talk about APEC, uh, the Asian Pacific Economic uh, Pac, uh, CPTPP, that's excluding US. Out, apart from US, the TPP is still in. It's called CPTPP. It's going to rectify. Uh, they're going to vote on that. I think within two years, and also the latest uh, uh, signatory is the RCEP, RCEP. So as you, as you can see, apart from this multilateral uh, uh, trade uh, 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 group that Vietnam belongs in, Vietnam also have a lot of bilateral trade agreement with different countries, with EU, Israel, uh, India, Japan, China, Chile, Korea. So that means doing business, you can see the government is very positive into setting up business opportunities and potentials with different countries. Uh, around the world. Okay, and then that, that, that's why a lot of people say, especially in Vietnam, globalization is not dead. Okay, Vietnam, they're very positive about RCEP, about the Belt and Road, about the CPTPP, and it's only by Asia. So we need to also talk about the Belt and Road effects. What is it? What is the, the, the benefit of Vietnam? Okay, of course, it is the bilateral relationship between Vietnam and China, infrastructure building in, in Vietnam, uh, the mass transit, the high-speed trains, the, the subways, and then, and then with this money, the capital, the access to AIIB. Okay, China will support Vietnam's export industry as well with equipment and manufacturing, uh, the supply chain. Uh, enhanced trade between Vietnam and China. And then because of the China internal circulation, that means China also need a lot of materials and even finished products from Vietnam. Uh, the BNR project will feed jobs in the next generation of the Vietnamese high school, high school workers. I said about the uh, automation, the AI, a lot of actually the car industry, Mercedes-Benz, Toyota, or, and the Korean, Korean company has already set up the uh, um, uh, car manufacturing in Vietnam. It's, so you can say in Vietnam, this is actually a high skilled and highly uh, uh, trained labor. So there will be, in the BNR, Vietnam will be keeping a balanced relationship between the China and the US and it's maintaining its flexibility, multilateralism and independence. So for Hong Kong, Hong Kong professionals, what are the areas that may be benefit to us? So in infrastructure, of course, the engineers, architects, consultants, and management companies. In finance, the PPP, PPP investors, structured financiers, syndication lenders, to support the integration legal uh, personnel, accounting, uh, the IES accounting personnel, 
in the IT software, hardware, uh, professional support, in the HR international recruitment services, uh, in the logistic area, the shipping, courier, land, sea logistics, and maintenance people, in education, language, international trade, cross-border education, in the industries, multi-level supporting industries. So doing business in Vietnam, so why, why I mean, we've, I've been in Vietnam for 20, 28 years. Why do we invest in Vietnam? Stable government, low setup cost, competitive labor cost, but rising. People are educated and very eager to learn. Uh, English, for example, in our company, English is the medium. So all the, all the people in our, in our, we've got about 5,000 staff, they all speak English. Countries setting up strong development route, strong GDP growth, and a, a strong population, 100 million people, and a lot of trade agreements, and increasing uh, PPP. This PPP is purchasing power parity. Okay. Uh, Huge uh, uh, catch up potential compared to the neighbors. About 70% of Vietnam still live in rural areas. So, like China, urbanization, as I said again, will bring in immense growth. So, also improving macro fundamentals. Uh, the interest rate is lowered, uh, inflation rate is, is lower, economic growth about 6 to 7% originally, now is 2.8%. Uh, and a country that has a lot of resources uh, 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 and, ex and an exporter of energy. Also, the government is very progressive with uh, market reforms. And then at the moment, the, the general stock uh, uh, valuation of the companies are still relatively low. So doing business in Vietnam, what we should be looking at? We should look at our own core competence. It's all written, a lot of uh, articles has been written about it. Know your principles and uh, give and take. Okay, you give first and take. You don't expect to take and give, okay, because you are always a guest to the company, uh, to the country. So learn your strengths and weaknesses. So know, know what you are, you are good at, and then you, you also uh, enhance yourself on the, on the weak side. Nobody is perfect. Communicate with the, with, with the staff. You can find your staff or your, your Vietnamese partners are very willing to talk. Share with them. Don't keep any secret with them. Be openness. So watch your language. We always, as I said, in our company, we always speak English. Even between uh, our Hong Kong staff, I require them to speak English in front of any of the Vietnamese staff so that it, it can, can be clear. And we have to be posed as an international company. Like we've got uh, staff from Australia, from Philippines, from Malaysia, from Singapore. So everybody speaks English. Respect the culture. So uh, although some, some people will think, oh, a lot of the, the, the holidays in, in Vietnam are quite similar to, the, to Hong Kong or to China, but it's the Vietnam holiday. Don't say, if you go to Vietnam, don't say it is Chinese New Year. It is not, it is Tet. Tet is the Vietnam New Year. Okay, we must respect this. So respect the local laws. You are foreigner, we are foreigner, we are not above the law. We have to respect the law and then reverse thinking and be considerable. So what you don't like, probably your partner or your staff could not like. So you care, generally care for your staff. In summary, treat as equals, teaching and learning, they are eager to learn, give opportunities to all. It doesn't mean that expert has got a better, better pay or better, uh, better uh, opportunities. We have to be fair for everyone and be professional. So opportunities, as I said, are seen with the Belt and Road, RCEP and CTPP, CPTPP actually. Infrastructure investment, the China growth model. Uh, infrastructure will lead to the FDI and then manufacturing economic growth. And SOEs, they want to privatize the SOEs and then uh, more SMEs and then increase living standard. Of course, there are risks. We have country risks, political risks, financial risks, uh, uh, financial flow risk, material flow risk, and information flow risk, but I will consider them to be low in Vietnam. And of course, we should, as a company, we should always have the risk mitigation procedures. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lam, for giving us so encouraging message, in particular to our Hong Kong professional 
as a uh, professional accountant, I'm very glad to know that uh, Hong Kong prof uh, professional accountants still have opportunities to to move to uh, to have mobility in other countries because uh, many of our students saying that they, they they don't see the upward mobility opportunity there. So that's uh, very encouraging. So next, uh, we I would like to invite Miss Elizabeth Fong. Ms. Fong is the Vice Chairperson of Hong Kong Business Association Vietnam. And Ms. Fong has worked as marketing and management position in leading Hong Kong conglomerates in the fields of fast moving uh, consumer goods and telecommunication across different regional markets, including Macau, Hong Kong, and China, Vietnam. And then uh, she, uh, she was the uh, General Director of Telecommunication Joint Venture between Honor Telecom and Hutchison for 10 years, uh, building a new nationwide high-speed mobile network in Vietnam. And currently, uh, Ms. Fong is the Director of uh, Diamond Cast Communication, uh, providing business consultancy, uh, especially for the uh, Vietnam market. So uh, Ms. Fong, please. Right. Um, thank you, Phyllis. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> and uh, like my fellow speaker, Anthony, I have been uh, working in Vietnam for over 10 years in telecommunications and also covering the whole of the country, 63 provinces. So also involving construction of network to building a sales and marketing team with IT, so in fact, it's a very full service venture that we had there, and it's a joint venture between Hong Kong and Vietnam. So uh, I'm also speaking on behalf of the uh, Hong Kong Business Association, which is an association based in Vietnam, trying to serve the business communities in Hong Kong and also in Vietnam. So uh, the perspective I'm going to share today on some challenges and opportunities in doing business in Vietnam would be really from the perspective of a practical experience as well as for the businesses uh, networking we have through our Hong Kong Business Association. So I think um, uh, Council General, Mr. Chiu and the other fellow speakers have talked about it on the socioeconomic indicators. Mainly I have two factors that I'd like to highlight in doing business in Vietnam is mainly in Vietnam, the inflation rate and also the exchange rate have been relatively stable. I think those are key for anybody interested to come into Vietnam, mainly because also the exchange rate is very stable in the past few years, have not moved much, so which is a very beneficial factor. Um, some challenges. Uh, I would like to assume in just a couple of challenges uh, and leave it some to our fellow speakers. Setting up a company in Vietnam sounds easy, but I think the simple ABC is you need to have a company address and also need to have a office lease agreement to start off. That is the first thing. Of course, you need to have your um, lawyer and also your accountant where you used to have you use them in Hong Kong and then maybe they have counterparts in Vietnam. And also you have to use some of the local legal and also professional firms because they know better how the market or how the government runs in terms of managing, uh, approving business licenses and all, all that. And, uh, and of course, Vietnam is ranked number 104 in the ease of setting up businesses, as well as 69 position in terms of how to do business in Vietnam. So it's not high in the rank, but I think if you know your way, if you contact the right people, I'm sure you'll be able to get your investment in easily and managing them. Uh, the other thing we have been asked through the association is because of the bustling of property and also because of the moving of manufacturing base from China to Vietnam, what is happening with construction permits? <laughs> Normally it takes a long time, but uh, typically I must say our experience is you need 110 days to have a construction permit, give and take, and also going through 11 procedures, mainly because you need to go through multi-levels of departments from state government to municipal uh, uh, levels, as well as to provincial level, because my experience of building a network in Vietnam, building base station tells me that there's a lot of approval processes you need to go through. But if you do it a few times, you're, you're, you're okay, you will know the procedures. And the other thing is um, 
culture. I like to focus more on the soft side of how to do business in Vietnam, which our fellow speaker Anthony has touched on, Pond. but maybe I can speak on my experience having to run a team of like 500 people from skill labor to really management level. Um, trust is very important. Uh, as we said, we are foreigner in Vietnam. We are actually leveraging on their experience and knowing their culture. We need to learn. And most important, if a partner, um, you need to leverage their strength, but you need to manage them very well, how to use them and, and, and the best of their experience of the local government, of the local networking. That is very important because many times I've heard that, you know, partnership is always on a very conflicting uh, situation, but we believe you need to leverage them because they know the country much better than you do. And uh, communication, interesting. Um, literacy is very high in uh, Vietnam. As we said, English speaking is also high if you can employ very good people. Uh, but uh, the experience is we found them the written English is very good. Spoken, also okay. But listening, sometimes there's a slight problem because you see all of us speak with a different intonation of English. <laughs> so um, they, sometimes it's very difficult for them to listen to your English. So sometimes it's much better if you write to us and with the written English, you also have some record of what is happening. And but they do really write very well and they are very arithmetic, strong, mathematic. Their system is very good. Face, not unlike Chinese. Face is very important. You need to respect them, but you need to also tell them what you think and be a bit more open mind. Um, on staff is important because uh, social etiquette, of course, greetings, dinners, lunches, all these are quite a plus in order to make relationship with your staff and you know, with your counterparts and with the government uh, uh, that is important to really have some entertainment with them. Staff management, as we said, Hong, uh, Vietnamese people are very, very hardworking. Uh, but there is one thing they are very, still not very, um, what I say, not developed in the sense like Hong Kong, very commercial mind, very professional mind. They are still very one boss attitude. That means if you are the boss, they only listen to you rather than listen to the team or to the peer group. They are not very used to that one. And I found out the experience uh, is actually whenever you tell them something like a direction instruction or tell them some ideas to brainstorm, we have to very carefully tell them this is an idea to brainstorm, please discuss amongst your team. But very often they will just say, oh, this is the boss direction. So that's it, we go and do it. And then we have to follow the instruction. But uh, um, my advice is you need to really tell them up front that this is for brainstorming idea and please upward communication and not top down because they are very creative and they have a lot of resources in their mind and they know their people very well, much better than we do being a foreigner there. Opportunities. Uh, just now, Mr. Tree has also said it's politically the most stable probably in ASEAN countries. Experienced workforce, yes, is lacking, but given good training, they learn very fast. And as we said, they are very hardworking, they're not nine hours a day. And most important is with 98 million population, half of them are women. And actually half of them are around 30 years old. So it's a very, very robust population base that we can use them. And uh, women's status in Vietnam is very high. Uh, I think they have equal, I've never seen a country with very good inequality of gender. And, uh, and of course the retirement age is young. That means women retire at 55, men retire at 60, which means the younger generation has more chance to upgrade to a succession path. That means we don't have too many people blocking uh, in that. So that's why it's a, the future for these Vietnamese people is very high. And um, happy index, I've been doing happy index every year in the, within the company. And we found that happy index is always very high because they are young, they have a bright future and they are very hardworking, particularly with all the investments coming in overseas, particularly Hong Kong. They have many, many opportunities to learn from us and we transfer the best practice to them. And one point about special economic zone, the opportunity is um, the government is developing very fast on setting up special economic zone. And actually, we actually are looking at 18 coastal economic zones plus 325 industrial parks. And these zones do offer low incentives in terms of personal income tax or even low incentive of tariff. So um, a bit of uh, introduction about our association. 
Hong Kong Business Association is set up 22 years ago in uh, Vietnam, mainly based in Vietnam in Ho Chi Minh is to service the business communities residing in Vietnam, as well as any potential investors from Hong Kong. So we do connect Hong Kong and business together and we welcome all nationalities of membership, whoever have interest in doing business in Hong Kong, or as well as knowing the people in Hong Kong and in Vietnam to connect to them. We are also a member of the Federation of Hong Kong Business Association Worldwide, whereby we can bring our members to also worldwide access. And of course, we are kindly supported by HTTC and the Hong Kong SAR government. Uh, we do have a managing structure. I won't go through in the detail. We, our general committee is based on uh, Hong Kong people. So we have a general committee. Our membership is around 343. And the uh, top three industries of our membership is property, garment, hospitality. But we have 16 classifications of membership, ranging from law, accounting, and also logistics, and also uh, 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 any other professional business auditing firm. So if you come here, you contact us, you'll be able to really connect to all this networking. We also have a voice in the government a consultation. We participate in a lot of consultation papers uh, and uh, in government and business consultation, we're a member of the Vietnam Business Forum. And we also participate in localized. Uh, if you are with us in the business association, we have a channel for you to bring any ideas you have to bring to the government and also any other organizations. We are very lucky during the pandemic, we have been hosting over 11 webinars and we've talked with other chambers uh, where we can have lots of exchanges from tax to IT to property um, uh, topics. We have networking, we have social events. Most important, we also, thanks to the cash donation from our members and our sponsors, we also do charity works to support the needy communities in Vietnam. So thank you very much. We welcome you to contact us. We are here to serve you and our, your support is our success. And uh, lastly, wish everybody the best of luck in doing business in Vietnam or to any potential investors who want to come to Vietnam to invest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Uh, next, uh, we have Mr. Simon Chen uh, to share his banking experience in Vietnam. Uh, Mr. Chen is the Chief Executive of the Shanghai Commercial and Savings Bank, uh, Nai branch in Vietnam. Uh, Mr. Chen joined the Shanghai Commercial and Savings Banks in 1980 and has served as manager in, man, uh, in different branches in uh, Taiwan, and he transferred to Vietnam branch in uh, 2015. Uh, Mr. Chen, please. Good morning, Sorry, I am can share my information to you. Okay, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Simon Chen from Shanghai Commercial and Semin Gate in Dong Nai. Uh, uh, today I was can sorry, Mr. The Chen. Uh, we cannot see your PowerPoint. That is okay. Uh, no. Hey, okay, I share. It's now uh, showing the. The Chum Danos. Sorry.
Can you see the, my PowerPoint? Uh, no. It's still showing this, your search function, is it? In the download function? Yeah. Not the PowerPoint. No, no, it's okay. No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, wait, wait, wait a moment, wait a moment. Okay. Uh, we always have some uh, technical problem, <laughs> just like my Zoom lecture. Okay, sometimes we have technical problems. So, sorry, I'm... When now do you see my Okay, now, now it's okay, yeah. Oh. Okay, okay. Huh? No, no, not now, no. It's okay? No. Right now it's okay, now okay. No, it's the browser. You are? You are? Oh, now it's okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not come with that. Sorry, I can we see the screen? Okay. We can see the uh, okay. PowerPoint on content. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, this contest includes three parts. First, I want to introduce the Shanghai Commercial and same again, same bank. And the second, we introduce the Minan Economic Center as a main event in recent year. Three. It's the Minnan Banking Center, uh, main event in recent year. First, I want to, I want to introduce the Shanghai Commercial and Sim Bank. Shanghai Commercial and Sim Bank shut in Shanghai in 1917, 15. And in 1934, it's at the Shanghai, Hong Kong branch. And then in 1949, the new China was set up by the Communist Party of China. So in at that moment, Shanghai Commercial and Semin Bank closed all the branch operation. And in 1965, he reopened his head office in Taiwan. In 2015, we, we witnessed our 100 year anniversary. And then in 2018, Shanghai Commercial and Semin Bank listing in Taiwan Stock Exchange. At that moment, it's the biggest IPO event in Taiwan. This page, I will show the Shanghai Commercial and Semin Bank Alliance. Right now, we have three Shanghai Commercial and Semin Bank. First, Shanghai Commercial and Semin Bank head office in Taiwan. And the, our Sassoli Bank, Shanghai Commercial Bank in Hong Kong. And another Shanghai Commercial Bank, she is the Bank of Shanghai, the big Shanghai Commercial Bank, Shanghai bank alliance to support all of the customers. This page show our global banking network. Right now, Shanghai Commercial and the same bank head office located in Taiwan. We have 72, 72 branch in, the, in Taiwan and the four branch, overseas branch in, in overseas. We include the Hong Kong branch. Vietnam branch, Singapore branch, and the Wuxi China branch. And we have the microfinancial institution company in Cambodia. The name is 
And then we have the subsidiary bank, Shanghai Commercial Bank in Hong Kong. This is our banking rating. And recently, our banking rating, SMP, gave us long term is cheap, cheap OB plus. And the Fitch gave us long term, long term rating is double A. And then we are uh, in the, the banker, we in all the world with the top 236 bank. This page show when we set up in Minnan. Shanghai Commercial and same, same Bank set up the, in 2005, set up the Dongnai Brand Office. And in 2010, we set up the Dongnai Branch. And in 2020, we got the Banning Dependent Office license, and we opened Banning Dependent Office in this year. This is our service, the product. We co we include corporate banking and the consumer banking. So all of need, all customers include the corporate and the consumer. And this, this center, we just introduced the Minnan economic main event in recent year. Top one, in 2014, Minnan because the AT China pro protest event. In that moment, most of the Chinese company we face the issues. Do we continue stay in Minan or we shut down our company? And the event two is the happened in 2018. The China with the United States trade war. In that moment, most of the company located in mainland China, we consider more to Minnan. Back even three, 2019 happened the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic. In that moment, many countries impact by the COVID-19. Event four, when happened in 2020, the United States label Minan was a currency many, many people, many people. So it's very important for Minan. And the event four, how we see the post COVID-19. Post COVID-19 was the curious for uncertain and uh, comp complexity and uh, ambiguity and the volatility. So it's very important for all of the company in Milan. Next, uh, we just share Minan the banking's main event in recent year. The first one in 2020, SVB has a new female government. It's the first time in the past 17, 70 years. The first former governor, his name is uh, Mr. Huang Ti Huang. Mr. Huang Ti Huang, in the past, he focused on the monetary policy. So, in the face the more regulation deployment environment. Second, two, the VND interest rate keep decreasing. Just we mentioned in the first, uh, in last year, we happened a COVID-19 event. So, SVV from that moment cut 75% point interbank rate. So, 
and the interpengular rate decrease. Three, foreign currency reserve reached the record high. In 2018, Minan's trade surplus was 60.5 billion USD. In 2019, it was the 21.5 billion USD. And the 2020, it was the 33.5 billion USD. So in 2020, Minan's the foreign, foreign currency reserve was the reached high 87.0 billion USD. The event for SVB responded to the US the claim of the currency manipulator. For the last 30 years, we just still a uh, USD vast the entered exchange rate. We can see from 1990 to 2020, VND always maintained the depreciation. Every, every year's depreciation averaged 7%. But from this year, you can see VND and vast USD the exchange rate very, very fortunate and uh, not stable and the not appreciation he maintained that uh, in appreciate and uh, it, this this month it reached the uh, appreciation high level number four the event four in the the SV implementation of the KEKYC get to develop digital banking model. It means the SVB step by step to develop the digital banking model to all the local bank. Even six, many bank was less. SBV has asked all local bank must to, to list in stock market. The purpose was to want all, all local bank to increase their transparency. So in the past, we can see all company we all person we face the interest rate and the foreign exchange rate of risk. So you must control your interest rate and uh, your foreign exchange rate of risk. So you must just rethink what kind of your income or expense you use the first. USD or VND. The last page was the right now the local bank. In this topic, if you come to Minan, not just count with the low foreign bank, you, you also can count with the local bank. So it's the list to your reference. This is all I introduced. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chen. Uh, now we come to invite our last speaker in this session, Ms. Betty Chen, uh, Director of International Relations of Sunwa Group and also the Executive Director of Sunwa Foundation to talk about some of our group's business in uh, Vietnam over the past 50 years, and also uh, discuss the successful development of business in Vietnam. Thank you.
Good afternoon. It's just past noon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, I, it gives me very great pleasure to talk about Sun Hua, uh, especially Sun Hua's development in Vietnam as an example of business opportunities in Vietnam. It will be a quick uh, review. So um, Sun Hua Group is a Hong Kong conglomerate and we have business in mainland China, of course, Hong Kong, uh, Macau, Japan, ASEAN countries, Canada, and the USA. And uh, Sun Hua is uh, one of the very early investor in Vietnam. So we have been in Vietnam uh, in 50 years. I will tell you why we enter Vietnam. But I think uh, it is very important uh, to catch the timing whenever you do the investment. And especially, uh, Vietnam is developing very fast recently. Um, maybe uh, our example can share with you that uh, when Vietnam joined the WTO in 2007, it gives us a very good, great impetus to expand our business in Vietnam. So it is a very good timing for us and we seize the opportunity. So uh, Sunwa actually 50 years ago, we entered Vietnam with our seafood processing business because uh, at that time, Sunwa has already uh, well established our seafood business in Hong Kong, mainland China, Macau, and we decided to expand to Southeast Asia. After we entered Vietnam, uh, we became one of the biggest seafood exporters in Vietnam. So that is our expertise, of course. For real estate, it is quite interesting development. We have three major real estate development in Vietnam. So Sun Hoa Tower, we built Sun Hoa Tower actually in 1997. And it is built uh, in the city center of Ho Chi Minh City. And at that time, after it was built, it became the landmark in Ho Chi Minh City. But now, of course, there are many more high-rise buildings in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we were told that it was like the International Finance Center. You have to give your identity card <laughs> in order to enter the building. Um, it was a, a development with a Japanese company. Uh, Saigon Pearl, actually, uh, we started construction in 2005 and it, we introduced the high-rise apartment living uh, in Vietnam through our project. It has become the dream homes of many people uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. Just last year, we already completed uh, the latest deluxe development in Ho Chi Minh City as well. It's called uh, Sun Hoa Pro. Financial services. Sun Hoa Group has financial services business and then it is very natural uh, for us to become one of the largest founding shareholders of Vina Capital uh, in Vietnam. Vina Capital was founded in 2003 uh, and is a leading investment banking and fund management company. Our chairman is also the chairman uh, of Vina Capital. Vina Capital has a Hong Kong uh, partner and the Macau partner for one of its, its uh, big development in Hoi An South uh, integrated resort. Our Hong Kong partner is Chow Thai Folk and the Macau partner is Sun City Group. It's a huge uh, uh, resort development uh, with a total investment of 4 billion US dollars. Coffee, why coffee? Of course, Vietnamese coffee is very popular around the world. And we only have uh, coffee business in Vietnam, not in other countries. And uh, since 2006, we uh, are an exporter and processor of Robusta coffee. Uh, the annual output is 80,000 tons and is one of the largest coffee exporters and producers in Vietnam today. But we only employ less than 50 people because uh, the operation is fully automated. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, innovation, I will talk about innovation because it is the very new business for us in Vietnam. 
And in recent years, the Vietnamese government uh, has been actively promoting innovation and entrepreneurship development. So just last year, uh, the Sunhua Innovation Center in Ho Chi Minh City was launched as the flagship of the Sunhua Innovation Center's network uh, to promote the Vietnam innovation and entrepreneurship uh, development advocated by the government. And uh, because of Sunwa's international network, we uh, are able to set up the Sunwa International Innovation Platform uh, involving many countries and regions uh, to develop uh, the global network to drive the innovation economy forward. Apart from developing our own business, we also help the Hong Kong and Vietnam community, business communities by establishing the Hong Kong Vietnam Chamber of Commerce, HKVCC in 2008. And actually HKBAV is our sister partner. And also the Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, we organized uh, luncheons, seminars, and also meetings for our members. In addition, we also promote uh, the uh, Vietnam uh, connection of Vietnamese business representatives with leading re entrepreneurs of Hong Kong, mainland China, and also Japan. So uh, I would like to um, say something about a example of a Hong Kong company. Uh, five years ago, a Hong Kong company came to the chamber and asked uh, us to give them some advice to invest in uh, Vietnam. They have uh, already got operations in mainland China and very successful. And they're uh, trying to find a second base outside China. But then they did not follow up after the initial inquiry. And then later, uh, there was the US-China trade war tariffs. And their operation in China has been affected. And then they went to Vietnam again. But this time, they found that uh, all the prices have already gone up. Uh, but now they are still uh, considering to have a joint venture with a local, Japan, uh, local Vietnamese partner. Sunwa Foundation is the public and social services arm of the group. And uh, over the years, we have carried out many social services projects, educational arts and cultural programs in Vietnam. And our efforts are highly regarded by the Vietnamese government. Uh, we have the Jonathan K.S. Choi Cultural Center uh, at the Vietnam National University. Uh, it was built in 2005 and 15. And uh, we organize international conferences and we all for training courses for Vietnamese officials and set up the Vietnam chapters of the Sunwa Global Young Leaders Network. And we held uh, social services and creativity day in Ho Chi Minh City in 2005, involving 1000 people. So now it is very difficult because the park has been uh, renovated and then no such large space to hold uh, events in the city center. Last year, we made a uh, five billion US dollar, uh, uh, five billion Vietnamese dong donation to the Vietnam government uh, for the anti-COVID uh, measures. And also we donated anti-epidemic materials, like masks to various uh, Vietnamese uh, ministries and Ho Chi Minh City government and Sun Wa's partner uh, universities. Uh, we found that our staff actually very appreciate the commitment of us to public and social services. And actually it will enhance the loyalty to the group. Our chairman, Dr. Jonathan Choi, was awarded the prestigious friendship order by the government of Vietnam. And he became the first Hong Kong citizen to be awarded. And in 2015, we were given three awards, one for our chairman, one for the group, and one for the Sunwa Foundation. So our Sunwa Foundation is highly 
uh, respected. Uh, in Sunwa's case, uh, we developed our own business in Vietnam and we also have the Hong Kong and Vietnam business community through the business chamber. Uh, in addition, we have the local Vietnamese people through charitable projects and international exchanges projects. But we work very closely with the government departments and the universities. So, um, Anthony and Elizabeth have already given quite a lot of advice on how to do business in Vietnam. Uh, I would just like to add that uh, in for, uh, our experiences, doing business in Vietnam is very different from doing business in Hong Kong and mainland China. And because of the cultural diversity, when you make investment in Vietnam, you have to understand the market, do very in-depth and careful market research, find good business partners, work together, respect each other, build trust and become friends. These are the important factors uh, to be successful. For market research actually should include the location of your business, the local government, local people connecting infrastructure, and also understand the priority of the local government and the national government. If your business falls into one of the priorities, uh, then the procedures will be more smooth and there may be incentives as well. And then I think there is one element that uh, Hong Kong investors can look into is a Vietnam startup and it is developing very fast. And there are quite a number of high growth startups and very diversified. Uh, they are ready to expand regionally and internationally. Uh, that is all. I would like to talk about today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Chen's interesting sharing. Thank you all of our uh, four speakers for this session. Uh, now we would like to have another short break. So uh, in this session, we have all our speakers in, uh, in this venue. We have Elizabeth, Betty, and Anthony with me here. And we also have um, Mr. Simon Chen, Mr. Wan, uh, and also Professor Tao uh, on Zoom. OK, so uh, see if uh, any question from the um, participants Oh, oh, and also we have the, um, let me see. We have uh, Dr. Tom from Vietnam, okay. So um, before we uh, come to the discussion, sorry. I would like to invite um, uh, Mr. Tong, uh, Phil Win Tong, who is the deputy director of the Institute of World Economic and uh, Politics, uh, Vietnam Academy of Social Science, uh, to give us some um, uh, comment about today's uh, workshop. And uh, Mr. Tong's uh, research focuses on uh, enterprise development issue and also the development of economic corridors, mainly in the uh, Great uh, Mekong sub regions. Hello, Mr. Tong, uh, Dr. Tong. Yeah. Uh uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to uh, meet you and have a chance to discuss with you about the opportunity uh, and challenge to invest in Vietnam. And uh, I think uh, it is a very interesting uh, workshop and uh, sharing the experience of uh, uh, the uh, field of uh, enterprise that who already invested in uh, in Vietnam, and you uh, through this workshop. Thank you very much for your presentators that uh, show us about the the opportunities, the challenges, and difficulties uh, when uh, you invest in Vietnam. Well, I I think that uh, the overall picture you present here is a positive picture of the uh, investment climate in Vietnam. Uh, you already uh, comment that uh, already, already present that the uh, market, uh, the, the macro stability, the political stability is good for 
from Vietnam, and you also highly evaluated the workers, skilled laborers, with the skilled laborers. That's uh, good for investor in Vietnam. You also point out some uh, difficulties uh, that uh, may, uh, may, may uh, hamper the development of the foreign investor, especially the culture. Uh, understanding the culture of Vietnamese peoples and then uh, lower, lowering the, the gap between uh, the culture of the foreign investor with uh, the Vietnamese people. It's very interesting. And also, you you talk about the uh, the the risks here uh, already some political risk like uh, the U.S. China intention uh, or the risks of uh, uh, investment in Vietnam when uh, the energy shortage. Uh, so I have some uh, some uh, comments. Of course, sometimes. On the one side, you can see that it is the risk, but on the other side, it may be the opportunities for enterprise from Hong Kong to come. Say, for example, about the energy issue in Vietnam. Uh, some uh, presentations say that it's, uh, the energy is shortage uh, in Vietnam. So if you invest in Vietnam, your production may be uh, interrupted for some time, right? That's, you can see the risk. But from the other side, when I view this, there's an opportunity for, for investor in the energy sector, especially when Vietnam encourages the green energy production, the windmill, the wind uh, or solar uh, electricity, uh, uh, encouraged in the development uh, in Vietnam. So investor in this sector have higher opportunities to invest in Vietnam. Also, I can see that uh, it is the opportunities for the industry that uh, consume less or efficient energy because the price of the energy is higher. But if you see from the other side, such when we had raised the corporate social responsibility, th those products that produce by using green energy will be uh, highly evaluated compared with the other products that using the uh, the the general uh, energy. So, you some somehow you can see that you have a, a better. Uh, competitiveness in when the uh, when people understand that using such kind of uh, green energy will help people to protect the environment, right? And uh, I think uh, the other other comments is about the environment concern. Here we have not. Uh, uh, we have not uh, been uh, mentioned. So uh, I, I think that uh, maybe there's a question on the, the, uh, the difficulties or challenge for enterprise to invest in Vietnam if you bring some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know, technology that will, may have a greater risk for the environment. Because provincial uh, authority will hesitate to approve such kind of uh, uh, in investment in Vietnam uh, in recent years. So that's uh, I, I think that is very good and very interesting to share such kind of uh, uh, such information to the, the, the meeting, the workshop. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tuang. So uh, maybe now uh, I receive one question from our participants. Um, the question is, is uh, Vietnam really ready to be the backyard of China in the latest season in setting up shops in Vietnam? Uh, adding to the pressure of the US-China trade war, 
the industrial land price has continued to increase despite the COVID-19 uh, and the trend is continuing. Uh, while everyone said it is too expensive in China, so uh, is Vietnam's productivity matching the investment dollars? And, and now do we see uh, any improvement over time? So uh, any, any of our speaker would like to respond or, or give uh, some, some of your comment about these questions? Okay. okay, I think the question is uh, a bit strange because is it ready? It's more than ready, it's, it's, it's happening, it happened. Okay, uh, it, it happened and that's the reason why you can see the, 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 the land price has been increasing. But as I think a lot of the speakers have said before, there are a lot of industrial parks in Vietnam. And then the industrial parks actually smoothen out a lot of the transaction cost, then even with customs uh, uh, built in there. And as I have presented, uh, the point is in Vietnam, you, you are not going to, it's only 100 million people. I said only because China has 140, uh, uh, no, 14 billion. Okay, in, 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 in Vietnam is, is, is uh, no, so 1.4 billion. In, in, in Vietnam is uh, 198 million, it's almost 100 million. So uh, um, it's not going to take all the, all the manufacturing, ma manufacturing capacity from China to Vietnam. And in Vietnam, that's why I think uh, with the, even with the Vietnamese government uh, uh, idea, they're going to develop the, the robotic, it's going to be upgrading themselves. So productivity, it's going to improve. Okay, now it is lacking behind because people are not taught or, or people are not experienced. I mean, it's only been opening like uh, on the man manufacturing, they have been, been, been opening slowly. And then the people too have to learn, like for me in the retail business, you, have, you want uh, a professional retail, retailers in Vietnam, it's, it's not a lot. So we have to bring in uh, overseas uh, expertise into Vietnam. But the Vietnamese people are very willing to learn. And our plan is to have localization eventually. So the, 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 the local talents has been learning and then uh, they're very, 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 uh, very smart. So what the question is whether Vietnam is ready, definitely is ready, it's going, okay? It's gonna improve productivity. And I think uh, the, the future will be very good. And uh, as Mr. or Dr. Vin just actually said, Hong Kong actually posed in a very, very good position because Hong Kong has got green fund and also green bond. The government is, is pushing the green bond. So if you're gonna invest in Vietnam and if you can raise the green bond uh, in, in Hong Kong, that's gonna help between Hong Kong's investment into Vietnam to provide capital in Vietnam as well. So that's why the two uh, places in Hong Kong and Vietnam, they can, they can both actually help to grow the country. I would uh, just like to add that actually uh, Vietnam is like China uh, in the old days when Hong Kong tried to, um, when Hong Kong entered the China market, it helped uh, the China market to internationalize. I think for Vietnam, uh, the same story uh, can happen. Uh, Hong Kong can bring in the international expertise while the local people can bring in uh, the local uh, uh, business and local connection. Uh, there are, I think, uh, still many opportunities for Hong Kong uh, professionals and business to enter Vietnam. Thank you. Uh, maybe I can just comment uh, on the labor force because uh, productivity rests very much on the labor force. So on the labor force side, as uh, we said, the population base is large, but the participation rate of the labor force is also very large. And also the labor force is very young. As we always said, 50% of the Vietnam population is around 30 years old. So if you have a manufacturing base or any production plant that needs skilled labor, you have a pool of those people who really can help you to increase your productivity. And I think in that respect, Vietnam is quite ready with that pool of uh, skilled laborers, uh, which is uh, the wage average wage level is still very manageable, uh, probably around two or three hundred dollars US only. So I think that is uh, should be a good point to fuel all these incoming investments in terms of increasing the productivity. But I think still comparing to China, we are still a bit, you know, 
behind because it, the, the opening time is uh, lesser later than the China. So, but I think the labor force is very key to the productivity. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, comment from uh, Mr. Wen? Uh, uh, yeah. May I have an, some comments yeah. on? Yeah. Well, I, I think that uh, if you compare the labor productivity be between Vietnam and, uh, and China now, well, Vietnam is lower than that, right? But uh, you, you can see the opportunities in uh, raising the productivity in Vietnam because as a presenter already pointed out that people in Vietnam willing to learn. So if you have better understanding the, the culture of Vietnam and uh, you have a good incentive to encourage them to learn and the new uh, technology introduced, they, they will learn the, and then they, when they master the, the technology, the pro productivity of those enterprises will increase. It is uh, not only the productivity uh, at the current uh, point of investment, but through the, in the future, through the learning by doing, they will uh, help the companies to raise the productivity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, there is another question from our participant saying that are companies in Vietnam or joint venture would it be possible a company is own 100% from foreign entities? <laughs> Definitely, yes. <laughs> yes. It can be wholly owned, uh, uh, foreign, foreign, uh, uh, foreign, uh, wholly owned. It depends on different industries, but most of the industries, it can be actually wholly owned by, by foreigners. Right, Mr. Kong? <laughs> yes. There are some industries, uh, like telecommunications, you need to be a joint venture, uh, a joint stock company. So I think for some business, but some okay. can be 100% now. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I, I think uh, relating to this, uh, uh, recently, I think our Vietnam government has issued the um, uh, investment law 2020, and they provide kind of uh, uh, prohibited or restricted list of business sector, uh, maybe uh, related to getting the uh, foreign investor to enter into a particular sector or industry. Uh, and yeah, if uh, Mr. Wen a little bit more on this area. Hello, Mr. Wen. From the uh, planning and investment, uh, no, no, okay. Uh, do any, um, how about uh, Dr. Tuan, do you have any information about this or any comment on this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, restricted or prohibited list of business sector for investment in Vietnam? Well, uh, uh, I have some comment. Uh, actually, yeah. the, the Vietnamese government tried to encourage uh, the enterprise, uh, foreign enterprise to come especially uh, foreign enterprise with uh, high technology. So uh, uh, not all the companies in, uh, in Vietnam are joint venture. There are some, some, many of them are limited companies, some uh, unlimited companies. And we expect that the joint venture companies will increase because it will help uh, sharing uh, your experience to the local partners. So uh, uh, it depends on the, the industry. Uh, and I think the Ministry of Planning and Investment already have uh, detailed information for you. If you're interested in investing in some industry, you, you can check with them and work easy to find information whether it is required to be a, a joint venture or it is allow you to invest as a 100% uh, invested in uh, uh, our country. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So actually, actually, in Vietnam, I find it's very open. So M, uh, um, MPI or even MOIT has uh, always have a list out of of the different area 
you can invest in and actually the further away the provinces there'll be more benefits and then what are the restricted uh, areas to invest um, it's very open so you can actually uh, find that out from the from the internet or actually ask the hong kong hong kong vietnam uh, 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 vietnam consulate in hong kong to to for this information yes okay thank you uh there's another question uh if hong kong technology startups uh, want to explore the vietnam market and land their innovation solution or product there is that uh, is there any soft landing platform to support them? So uh, maybe, uh, okay. yes, <laughs> any, any uh, supporting yeah. platform? Yeah, actually, uh, many of the, um, like in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City, uh, universities and also government agencies, mm. they all have, uh, you know, platforms mm. uh, to have uh, startups in Vietnam. and. Uh, of course, Sunwa, we just started up, we have mm, the innovation, innovation. center. Yeah. Uh, you are very welcome uh, to contact us and then uh, to be linked with our Ho Chi Minh City uh, startup center and also our Hanoi center. And then because we are also linked with the Hong Kong uh, Science and Technology Park and oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Cyberport. Uh, in the slide, actually, we have uh, all our partners, including Korea and Singapore. And uh, we have a very broad network uh, to share uh, information and also for uh, cooperation opportunities. So I think this is a very um, blooming uh, sector uh, in Vietnam. I think also as well as in Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there's another uh, question talking about the Vietnam Industrial uh, Song, uh, asking about what are the um, uh, policy, okay, investment policy that are all favorable investment policy to encourage the, uh, those uh, investment. And uh, the second question is, uh, uh, which uh, industry? is the most favorable one to for foreign investors to uh, invest in Vietnam. That is, uh, you are focusing on which particular industry or which industry is most uh, being encouraged to invest here. Uh, is there any comment from uh, Mr. Wen or Mr. Uh, Dr. Prong or from those uh, in Vietnam? Any comment here? No, no, no particular. <laughs> well, I think I think the different in the, okay. There are a lot of industrial parks, and a lot of them are actually privately owned. So these industrial parks, they are in compete with each other. So uh, they are Singapore owned, Korean owned, Japanese owned, Hong Kong owned, Chinese owned. So uh, you can negotiate with the different industrial parks, and a lot of them actually are providing one stop shop, one stop, one stop shop services. So including uh, uh, outgoing customs and including taxation, everything inclusive. So, but uh, I would encourage you to uh, actually look at more of these different industrial zones, talk to them now in, uh, through the Zoom or through, through the internet or webinar, it's a lot easier. So a lot of them are full already, okay, but they are still uh, opportunities. So it's much better to open your factories inside the industrial zone, but each of the industrial zones, they have different focuses. So uh, when your investment is there, probably also around that in that particular industrial zone, they are all industry, some of them are industry focused. So you can actually uh, uh, look at them. And again, the Consular General of Vietnam in Hong Kong will be able to, to give you a lot of information about this. Thank you very much. Uh... Any other questions raised from floor? Well, I, I think that still have opportunities for enterprise to come, even though the industry is, or industry is already full, because some of the provinces, they try to encourage uh, the enterprise. As I said, they try to encourage the enterprise with high technology. So they, they will have a kind of negotiation for enterprise already in the industrial zone. And they, they may move to another places uh, 
so the the space will be available uh, unless you show uh, that uh, you have advantages and uh, will bring bring benefits not only for for the investor but also benefit for the province then. so they will consider the the uh, opportunities like uh, Bingzhen province for example they have some kind of strategy uh, to encourage the new new one with high technology and uh, low uh, uh, investment risk thank you very much Hello,主持人好。Hello,主持人好。喂。Hey,喂,hi。主持人好。我想问一下,是越南是有社会科学院同博士,在越南有政府出面办的经济特区吗? Hey, so, uh, Professor Tao's question is, is there any uh, 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 special economic zone uh, controlled by us? Government or managed by government? 一四年,一四年我们参与了云屯经济特区的规划,不知道云屯目前是什么状况的? <笑>云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯云屯
affect your management or the in running the business in uh, Vietnam? Or uh, is there any, um, is it for, for example, how does it, I think is uh, quite related to just uh, Elizabeth talking about that uh, the, the staff in, in Vietnam are more, uh, we like to listen to their boss, okay? They, they are now uh, willing to express their own opinion, okay? So, so I think this is a, a, a kind of or, or one of the indication of talking about power distance. They have a large power distance, okay? So uh, can you talk more about this? I, I think this one is uh, quite interesting. Okay. Um, I think first is, uh, I would keep a very open mind to go there. I, I, I always keep a very open, friendly basis, even though um, I was the chief executive of the operation. Um, I still go in with a very open mind and treat them as a friend, but still manage to hold up the, a bit of the power <laughs> because they do respect power. So uh -huh. you, do not, you do not become too friendly with them, but you uh -huh. still be a friend. But at times, uh, mandate things that you think is important to run the business. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the Vietnamese uh, employees uh, like to have after work, you know, dinner with you or, or mm. uh, invite you to their home, sit on the floor. You know, this is the way they do, you know, sit on the floor to eat. And you have to be feel at home with them. That's okay. But in the office, sometimes when you're, need to lead something, you still have to maintain a distance. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, you need to let them respect you. And also, I think most important also give them faith. And it's, um, I must say the challenge is a bit tiring sometimes in Vietnam's work. I remember every time after work, I become very tired because I have to talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because I have to do a lot of convincing to them. Uh, Vietnam means, if I can say that it's a bit of a stubborn nature, <laughs> you need to really convince them a lot on something. They may at the start tell you, oh, yes, 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 boss, I listen to you. But going back to his desktop or desk workstation, he will think twice what you say, whether he's convinced. So you really have to talk a bit more in detail to mm -hmm. convince them why you think this way, why the company should go that direction. So once he's convinced, he will just go and execute for you without any problem. It's like marching, you know. Okay. So uh, I think this is sort of the day-to-day -day operation. Yeah. Okay. So for, for our company, it's actually building up the co uh, company culture. So we have been spending a lot of time because our company has been in Vietnam for a long time. And uh, especially like for our, for our retail BU, because it's an it's American brand, it's a, it's a Canadian-owned American brand. So we have a, a, a business culture that incubate uh, the openness, the empowerment uh, of, the, uh, of the staff. We have direct channels, even from the CEO to the store managers level. So when, when we go down, of course they listen, they're very polite. And uh, what Elizabeth said is that they, uh, uh, sometimes they're reserved into sounding out because they're very polite. So they don't want to upset their boss. But it is the culture because our culture is caring, sharing, and learning. So we have been always uh, encouraging them to, to, to speak up. And then we do a lot of, a, a, a lot of uh, group activities, uh, the charity, group charities, the group CSR. So these kind of things, you, you, you befriend with them and then you encourage them to actually speak out. So we have got a, a very in intensive uh, MT programs. The MT speak out. So they can be like MTs are, 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 have got uh, our DNA. So we have been running our MT programs for the past nine years. So a lot of the MTs have now uh, moved up to, to managers. And in this kind of culture, they also teach their staff uh, on this. I think it's uh, a lot of the, the way it's how you run the company and how you actually uh, 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 put yourself as a, even as a boss or as a manager, how, how do you portray yourself? Like uh, Elizabeth has been to our annual dinners. So they're very happy, <laughs> very, very happy. Okay, and, but they, yet, yet, uh, um, they, they respect you. So they have, we, we empower them, actually give them a project or give them different, different projects like uh, for them to, to, to work on it. I say, don't ask me, you solve the problem. Okay, this kind of culture, I think that will, that will help to be able to re, uh, reduce the, 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 the differences. Yeah, the distance. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> I would like to add that uh, my experience with Vietnam is very interesting. I found um, my um, colleagues in Vietnam, they treat their friends like their brothers and sisters. And you know, they're very close. And then after I, I went to Vietnam, when Vietnam Capital opened in 2004. Uh, and then uh, since then, I have been working for the group and the foundation and many of my partners really treat me as friends after knowing me. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this is an interesting aspect. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I think uh, you have to establish more friends because after mm -hmm. they have become your friends, they will do everything for you. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, during my experience, um, I found that, uh, uh, of course, in Hong Kong, we are very used to a very professional way mm -hmm. of conducting meetings and mm -hmm. then arranging projects, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and Vietnam, they have their own way. And that is very last minute. And then <laughs> I think we all uh, Hong Kong people have the experience. And then after a few times, we have to uh, tell them in advance and then uh, give them the rundown mm -hmm. and also to work with them. But after a few times, uh, I found them uh, that can work also very professionally. So I think uh, it just need time for um, you know, more communication. And then once they understand uh, your, you are for them, and then it is good for the project. Uh, and then they will follow. And when they execute, even very last minute, they can execute uh, very well. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that is fine at the end. But of course, I think from Hong Kong's uh, point of view, we like to do it more, uh, you know, timely manners and more professionally. And, and I th I think that is the Hong Kong expertise, and then I think they appreciate mm -hmm. uh, in the end. Thank you very much. Very interesting sharing. Uh, I got another question that is um, green policy is the one hot topic in business now. What is the uh, Vietnam government policy on the business on environmental impact and sustainability? And in addition is that Vietnam's um, workforce is mainly female. Uh, what is the education level for the population? <laughs> is there anyone can have such kind of um, response? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Tuong, do you yes, have any uh, figures uh, or some kind of rough statistics? Yeah. I, I think that uh, for the first question, Vietnam uh, government uh, already built up the green growth uh, strategy. And they encourage, uh, like I said, that uh, for technology that helped Vietnam to transform from the, the current economic growth model to the green growth model. Uh, that's the, the first one. Like uh, for the green energy, for example, they have some kind of uh, 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 policy to uh, to encourage the investor uh, to come because uh, the, normally the price of the green energy like a uh, wind uh, energy or solar energy is higher than that of the, the general one so they have some kind of uh, policy to uh, to increase their com competitiveness and for the second question let's see uh, is uh, it's not the, the, the truth because uh, the male and female of uh, Vietnam is uh, quite balanced, but it depends on the industries. For, ex for example, labor industries, but uh, uh, like uh, textile and garment or uh, electric industry, uh, they require high skill and female in Vietnam is better than that of uh, uh, male in doing such kind of uh, uh, skill. So in such kind of industries, you can observe that the female is, uh, is uh, account for large proportion, sometimes 90% uh, or even more. But for other industries, it is uh, another case of, it depends on the industries. 
but not all. And uh, as you see that uh, the, the education in Vietnam quite, uh, the literacy in Vietnam is, uh, is high. Uh, in general, all of them uh, will graduate the, the high school before they start uh, the, 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 the job. So therefore, uh, you already comment that they are willing to learn and they are able to learn because they already at a high level of education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe uh, we have uh, the last questions, okay. Uh, is there any payment gateway in uh, Vietnam, such as WeChat Pay, Alipay, or Octopus? Um, does Vietnam government allow foreigners to involve in this kind of financial industry? Is, is there any WePet, uh, WeChat Pay or Alipay now? Yes, yes, there is. There's mobile payment. Uh, and then, of course, this is a restricted area. So you have to work with the, 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 the government. Yeah, you, get, you get a lot of license, like Momo Pay. Momo Pay is actually invested. The chairman of Momo Pay is from Hong Kong. So uh, there are a lot of different paying systems as well, but not directly WeChat Pay or Alipay in there. So uh, uh, they are working towards it. Uh, but it's not as what you have seen in, uh, in Hong Kong or even in, in China. But they are, I think, uh, sooner or later, they will, they will catch up with this, uh, uh, with this payment because um, the, um, a lot of the, the Vietnam currency now is still using uh, paper, paper money, so the cash. So there is, it will be more efficient with the electronic uh, money and with tax and with, uh, with the uh, money control fraud. Uh, uh, corruption or everything that that can be controlled, right? So a, a, adding to that, uh, the, the previous questions, it's not. I think uh, we have quite a very balanced male and female uh, uh, staff uh, proportion, but just the, the 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 lady staff or the madam is just a little bit more strong, <laughs> <laughs> and they work very very hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for all our speakers today for this uh, fruitful sharing and uh, providing insights about investment in Vietnam and uh, give us uh, uh, information about what are the opportunities there. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, last, yeah, yeah. I missed out. 呃，刚才您问的问题，我刚才的查了一下，就是我们的呃政府，就是有一个规划，就是到二零四零年就云吞就呃规划成呃沿海多行业多领域的经济区，就是我们还在建设是经济区，简单的经济区不是特别的经济